Week three of the end zone presented by TiVo. Alongside Ian Eagle, I'm Jason Horwitz. Glad to be with you each week here on CBSSports.com and on your TiVo DVR via TiVo Cast. The top five stories in and around the NFL. Ian, it's good to see you for a third week. Can't and believe can't believe they let us come back for a third week. No, it's nice of them to invite us back and to invite Randy Cross into the mix as well. Former Pro Bowler with the San Francisco 49ers, CBS broadcaster, and the matchup of the week, Jason. Not a lot stand out this week, but no. I think there's one in the NFC that probably is the headline more than any other. Yeah, it has to be. And, and Randy, it, it, with Dallas and Chicago, you've got uh, a team that's undefeated but hasn't really played a defense like they will see against Chicago, and a Bears offense that, uh, well, is there any other word at this point than to say just stinks? No, mediocre. I was going to go mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be nice and say, you know, it's week three. Let's say questionable. It, it, it's one of those matchups we see – especially this time of the year, it's strength on strength with the Cowboys offense against the Chicago defense. And then you've got weakness on weakness on the other side, because uh, despite what you saw last week uh, out of that Dallas D, I think you really have to have questions about what Dallas's defense can do. And it'll be a, it'll be a pretty good challenge, especially the deep ball with Chicago. Here, here's a question. Why don't the Bears, because I know they said in the preseason that they wanted to get him involved in the offense, Devin Hester is the most explosive person that they have on their team. Why is he not involved in this offense? Well, I think he will be. Certainly with the, the way that the games have transpired so far, it, it's pretty clear. They need another playmaker yeah. on offense. And the issues offensively for them, Rex Grossman now on a national stage, every week there's going to be scrutiny. Hey, Randy, mm -hmm. they decided during the offseason that they were going to stand pat with their quarterback, stick with Grossman, <laughs> Greasy as the backup, Orton as the third string. And here we are now heading into week three, questioning that decision as to whether or not Rex Grossman is ever going to be the answer for this team to be the kind of squad that they envision themselves to be. Well, the one thing you have to love about Lovey Smith is he's terribly consistent. Uh, he does say things, he does commit to things, and he sticks with them, whether it's his cover two Tampa style defense or his, his quarterback in Rex Grossman. I, I, I think. You can find plenty of reasons to, to rip him about that decision based on how Rex, Rex has performed in the last three games. But the bottom line is, is in, in Lovey's mind, he gives his team the best chance to win. And just real quickly on the Devin Hester thing, this is an age-old question. It was, it was a lot like, you know, how are you going to possibly get Dante Hall involved in the Chiefs offense? Right. Every great returner, not every guy that can function in air and make people pay on returns has any clue as to what to do on offense. I don't think it's quite as big a deal as people make of it. Yeah, right now it's a bit of a gimmick. And I think if you look at the question mm -hmm. marks on the other side for Dallas, certainly the offenses look good. Yeah. But now Tony Romo is dealing with maybe the premier cover two in the NFL. And unlike week one and week two, where Romo was able uh, to operate freely and comfortably I think you're going to see a little different tune now in week three. Romo's put up very good numbers. The touchdown to interception ratio is strong, six to one. Week one, the numbers were out of this world, Hall of Fame-like. But now he's going up against a legitimate defense, a big-time defense that the Chicago Bears have. Yeah, at no time during this season will anyone confuse that Bears defense with a Giants defense. <laughs> so he'll have to kind of get over that one. Uh, I, I think the big challenge for the Dallas offense is going to be committing to a running back. Everyone wants to have two. Well, in reality, they only have really one that makes a quick, decisive decision, and that's Barber. Uh, Jones is trying to dance a little bit, and if you try to dance against Dallas, they're going to absolutely pound you. Well, what Wade Phillips has said, though, at this point in this week, he will continue with the same system he has been doing, and that is series by series. You know, but there is one piece mm -hmm. of news heading into this game, and it's not the speculation, and it's not the uh, you know team weakness against team weakness, strength against strength. Tank Johnson, the former Bear, uh, was cut. He's serving an eight-game suspension in the NFL, has signed a two-year deal with the Dallas Cowboys, obviously won't play this game. But there is the air of uncertainty about what he knows about this Bears team hmm. that maybe he can help the Cowboys. Randy, you're an offensive lineman. Tell me what defensive linemen actually know about scheme. Well, first you'd have to ask most of them to spell it. Uh, then they'd be kind of stumped. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure what a D lineman is going to be able to tell a coach outside of you know, slant packages. And when we look at you in two backs, we do this. When we look at you in single back, when you go empty, empty backfield, the defensive line is doing this. We're going to slant towards your overload receiver-wise into the slot. Maybe something like that. 
Um, but you're not talking about a free safety. You're not talking about a middle linebacker. You're talking about a defensive tackle, and, and I'm not sure if there's really that much value. I, I think the signing is more of a distraction for the Cowboys and, a, and not a laughable matter for the Bears, but it's not really much of a, much of a factor. Yeah, so All right, we let Randy pick first last week. I'm yes, picking we first this week. I've just made the big decision. Oh, well, let's get to your pick in a second. Let's relive here. How, how, how'd, those, how'd those picks go last week? Well, they week, didn't anyway. work so well. Let's well, get to second. our – wait a minute. Ian, hold on to your thought here. Let's get to our TiVo rewind. Uh, and, and it goes back to last week's game, the, the, char the Chargers and the Patriots. And, Ian, uh, let's relive here what Randy did because, uh, truthfully, we were terrible on no, this. No, no, let's I don't see recall what, any of this. Let's see what Randy is. For the Chargers and the Patriots. Well, I was going to say, I love the Cowboys in that game. <laughs> Yeah, smart man. <laughs> I, I, I like I like the Pats. I think the Pats are about a touchdown better at this point uh, in the NFL season. Randy, I don't know what you're talking about. They were three touchdowns better. Come on, Randy. Seriously. You're better what than I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Ian was whining at the beginning of this about not getting to pick first last week, so I, I yeah. think we should let him pick first. I should get to so, pick so oh, the Cowboys. Yeah, go let him go. All right, Cowboys and Bears, pick. I like the Bears. I like the Chicago Bears. Defensively, we know that Dallas is yet to see anybody close to this. I think the Bears will get enough done offensively, win a close one in uh, this headline game of the week. Randy, I'll let you go second. Who do you have? All right, I agree with Ian as far as the Bears, but I just don't think it's that close. I think right now Chicago, especially with that defense, is much better than Dallas. You know what? We'll make it a, a three-way sweep here. I'll also go with the Bears, and I agree with Randy in this. I don't think it's that close because the Cowboys have not seen a team that can stop the run yet in this season. And, uh, you know, so all of a sudden Tony Romo's going to have to beat you, and that secondary is too good. So we will make it a three-way sweep. All right, that's it for the first segment of the End Zone. Stick around. Tune in the rest of the way here in week three. You can always catch us on demand, cbssports.com, or on your TiVo DVR via TiVo Cast, and watch us in your living room. We'll be back. Yep, no problem.